Hey, how's it going, everyone, and welcome to Found Flix. On this thing explained, we're looking at what? What's that noise? We interrupt this program with breaking news. We are coming to you live from PS5, where things are out of control because the PS5 is more available than ever before. If you want to try to snag one for yourself, check out the link in the description below. That means now is the perfect time to jump into the mini worlds and games just waiting to be explored on PS5. I've had my system for a while and it still continues to blow me away. This is truly a next level gaming experience. There's a bunch of impressive technological advancements here that blow the doors off of anything I've played before. Obviously the graphics are insane and there's a staggering amount of detail crammed into every environment you come across. This really adds a whole new level of immersion, but what takes this to the next level is no load times thanks to the ultra high speed SSD. The way it goes seamlessly from gameplay to cutscenes is impressive every time, and again without long load times it really makes you feel like you are immersed in the game. Of course the controller is key too, and the DualSense boasts adaptive triggers, haptic feedback, and 3D audio to make you feel even more part of the action. Then as for the games themselves, there's something out there for everyone no matter what you're into. Knowing that PS5s are more out in the wild than ever before, I'm feeling inspired to dig into one of my absolute favorite games of all time, The Last of Us Part 1. It's been rebuilt from the ground up for PS5 and looks absolutely amazing. Even if you played the game a bunch of times before in the past decade like me, it really does look next level on PS5. It definitely blew me away all over again. Oh, and also beware of spoilers because we're going to be diving into the entire game's story. We open at the beginning outbreak stage of a dangerous infection that is quickly spreading. The mysterious Cordyceps fungus has transformed normal people into monstrous creatures called the infected. Our story is initially presented from the down to the ground perspective of the Miller family, taking place from little Sarah's terrified POV. Her father Joel and his brother Tommy take her through small town Texas as it's torn apart in front of their eyes. Things take an even more personal turn when a car crash leads to an encounter with a soldier, and after he's given an order to shoot, tragically takes Sarah out. When we pick up many years later, Joel is still haunted by the loss of his daughter and has become a hardened cold mercenary. Whatever is necessary for survival in the new post-apocalyptic society. And he has done a lot of messed up stuff in the past years. This is all put to the test when he and his partner Tess meet the leader of an underground resistance group, the Fireflies. Marlene enlists them with taking a young and seemingly immune to the virus girl, Ellie, out of the quarantine zone and to another group of her allies. But their on the surface simple task won't prove so easy. Sure, there's a wide variety of infected to deal with, but wouldn't you know it, it's mankind that turns out to be the problem most of the time. Even more critically, each interaction along their path is built around developing and deepening the relationship between Joel and Ellie. Joel still starts to stand offish and cold with the girl, but still above all else wants to protect her from the dangerous world. He sees Sarah in Ellie, and that already causes trouble for his typical cold-blooded nature. The thing he has to come to terms with is that while sure there are some similarities between them, but Ellie is not Sarah. They're presented with several twists on their relationship dynamics, first with the bitter Bill whose lover took his own life, but does still help the duo out. Even more paramount are the siblings Sam and Henry. The older Henry takes care of his younger brother in an obvious mirror of Ellie and Joel's relationship. Things of course go south when Sam is infected, and Henry has to make the hard decision to put his brother down to save Ellie, a choice that he cannot live with. Joel is being forced to face that just like Henry, no matter how hard he tries, he might not be able to always protect his precious cargo. This comes further into play when they reunite with Joel's brother Tommy after many years in a colony of survivors. Joel spills to Tommy the situation with Ellie's immunity, but after the disturbing and humbling journey up to this point, he tries to ask his brother to take the girl the rest of the way. Tommy refuses, but the relationship is brought to a head when Ellie learns of Joel's plan. She, just as he did with Ellie, has come to see him as a father figure. Ellie merely broaches the subject of his deceased daughter, and Joel flips, thinking that this should be the end of their little adventure once and for all. Yet after some reflection, he continues his burden as well as purpose of bringing Ellie to her final destination. He cares about her, but it's not just as his faux daughter. Their relationship has become its entire own thing, and he still Still thinks it's his duty to protect her no matter what. The protector relationship is flipped on its head in Colorado. The pair are ambushed by bandits and Joel is severely injured. Now it's up to Ellie to step up and play protector for a change. Along the way, she learns a hard lesson about survival nowadays. She happens across a man, David, who it turns out is the leader of the group that wounded Joel. Despite this, he still offers life-saving antibiotics. This might have seemed without payback, but unsurprisingly, David and his gang later descend upon their hideout and capture Ellie. They don't want to kill her, however, but instead want her to join their cabal of cannibals.
rules. This leads to another brutal murder as Ellie disposes of David because she has no other choice in order to survive. Something we see come up time and time again. Regardless, she's traumatized by the brutal experience, but her previous efforts did help heal Joel, who saves the girl once more from the group's burning building. Thank you to PlayStation for sponsoring this video. With their increasingly murky past, Ellie and Joel try to bury the hatchet and apologize for any past transgressions. United now more than ever, they finally reach their ultimate destination of Salt Lake City, where there are only more complications and their relationship grows even deeper. The pair meet up with what is left of the Firefly group, and Joel has reached the end of his long journey. Yet it's only when Ellie is already being prepped for her fateful surgery that Marlene spills about the real repercussions about what they're up to. In order to create the vaccine, they will have to remove the infected part of the girl's brain, which means that she won't survive the operation. An unhinged Joel goes on a rampage through the facility to track down Ellie. Once he does, the surgeon pleads with him to consider what he's doing. Is Ellie's life worth saving while dooming everyone else? Joel makes his feelings on the matter clear, killing the man and rescuing the unconscious Ellie. On the way out, Marlene confronts him with a final plea to consider what he's doing, but also points out something else to chew on. The decision being made here is actually Joel's, not Ellie's. And she believes that if Ellie was to be the one making the choice herself, she would choose to sacrifice herself for even the potential of putting a stop to the infection for good. Joel is way far down his tunnel of protection at this point and dispenses of Marlene. He and Ellie flee the city as she starts to regain consciousness, unclear of what led them here. Joel undoes much of his seeming progression as a man and lies to the girl, underplaying her importance. He fibbed that the Fireflies found a ton of other immune cases, so they don't need Ellie anymore. So you're not that special after all of that hubbub they went through. Ellie is skeptical and later confronts him, wanting to know the truth about everything. Does he swear that that's what happened? Joel short-sightedly sticks to his guns. And it's on this shaky grounds that we leave the duo's ever-evolving relationship. While it does conclude their trek, now understanding that a cure isn't as simple as it was initially promised. We can't understand why Joel made himself a decision to lie to Ellie. Just like Sarah, he's even now more than ever consumed by protecting her. Now that they have a real bond, she has become a progeny of his daughter, even though he understands the emotions there aren't one and the same. Even if her death could save humanity, Joel refuses to even consider the notion of letting another daughter die on his watch. Sure, it's all about survival, but as we've seen every step of the way, it's much more personal than that. Without protecting these relationships, what has humanity become? It's tough to say who is in the right here, but lying to Ellie further damns Joel and his many selfish decisions. This sort of morally ambiguous ending really hammers home the overall main themes of the game. Even if there are obvious gray areas surrounding Joel's actions, we sympathize with him because we experience the story from his perspective. But on the other hand, all it takes is a slight perspective shift, and it makes Joel look pretty ruthless. I mean, how many people have you killed along your path? When you think about it, it's kind of messed up, really. They're all just trying to survive like everyone else. All the trouble comes when their respective desires are at odds. The point is, there is no black and white good and evil nowadays. Only the morally gray require you to stay alive. This mentality can't always go on unpunished. And indeed, Joel's actions lead to a ripple effect that proves that you can't outrun repercussions forever. Thanks again to PlayStation for sponsoring this video. If you want to snag a PS5 for yourself, check out the details down in the description below. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.